Hello, Cohasset, and welcome to another edition of Our Town. I'm Mark DiGiacomo, and tonight we do have Pat Martin back from her party from last time. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky to have me. Oh, I, I, I know I am. I know I am. <laughs> tonight we have uh, Paul Carlson, the uh, chairman of the Board of Selectmen, on uh, to talk a little about uh, what's been going on in Cohasset, and a lot's been going on, Pat. Yeah, lots has been going on uh, behind the scenes from what it looks like on some of the blogs to what's been going on in the paper. It's two different kind of approaches. It looks calm, business as usual, but then there seems to be uh, certain folks that think that a lot's going on that we don't know. Right. Well, maybe we'll learn some of it uh, tonight. I'm sure Paul will tell us. He's a uh, two-term uh, selectman. He's been on the board and entering his sixth year, so he's seen quite a bit in those uh, six years of tenure. And if you're wondering whether he's going to run for re-election in April, we will ask him. <laughs> so hang in there. We also got upcoming shows. Uh, we're hoping to get the acting town manager. i got to remember to say acting. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably talk about that tonight a little. And, um, the, and, and trying to schedule the debate. We've uh, invited both the chairman of both the Republican Committee and the uh, town co uh, Democrat Committee to... Uh, bring forward the issues uh, as they relate to the presidential election so that viewers can once again see uh, perhaps how that trickles down to Cohasset and uh, get insight on maybe how they should vote if they haven't decided already. Yeah, and it's, it's funny because that'll be our third. So this oh. is our third presidential election. You're dating us, Mark. You're making this look That's old. Right. You really well, we're going to have to be a little tougher than Jim Layer <laughs> last night, I think. So. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't let anybody <laughs> no, no, steamroll no, no. you. That's, that, I, that's not going to happen. No yet. way. <laughs> but it's always a fun show. Uh, we try to take ourselves too seriously. But, you know, the, um, the presidents of the, or the chairman of the town committees really can't help themselves. And uh, so. Well, and I'm sure they're, they're anxious to get their points of view out and, uh, you know, be heard. So it'll be, a, it'll be a very lively show. It'll be good viewing as always. So we'll try to get that. Well, we're going to need to get that on before the presidential election. So sometime over the next month. That's right. That's right. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, move forward with uh, Paul. So we'll just take a quick break and then we'll bring Paul on and we'll find out what's going on. We'll be right back. And welcome back. And with us tonight is Chairman of the Coasset Board of Selectmen, Paul Carlson. Paul, welcome. Thank you for having me. I want to thank both of you. I want to thank Coasset uh, Community Television for inviting us here for these wonderful facilities. It's our pleasure, after you work so diligently, to help bring this uh, studio and the broadcast capacity uh, back to Cohasset with your work on the Cable Advisory Committee. No, the, no. You and I and uh, Jim uh, Morrison uh, have spent a lot of time on this, and it's delightful to see what a great facility we, we now have. It's a great resource. So, Paul, you've been on the uh, Board of Selectmen now. You're a uh, two-term uh, incumbent, and you're in your sixth year. I think it'd be interesting just to start off, given that it is a presidential election, with all the kind of uh, talk about looking back, you know, how do we compare now to four years ago? How do we compare to eight years ago? How do you think we are in Cohasset compared to, say, the last five years about what's going on and the tenure or the, the temperament and so forth and the issues that are currently before the Board of Selectmen? Well, I like to contrast my first term, which uh, ended in 2010, with my second term. The first term, we had a very experienced town manager, Bill Griffin, and, um, and a finance team that we had a lot of confidence in. Everything looked very stable and pacific on the surface. But in fact, underneath that, all sorts of problems were developing in the, in the uh, financial and accounting structure of our town was collapsing. Uh, a lot of it came, some of it came to, uh, um, <coughs> came to light during the deliberations of the water planning group when we were having trouble getting the, the information that we needed to make our decisions. And that was uh, the water planning group that was most active in the uh, spring, the second semester of uh, 2010. And then later that year, um, and there was the Melanson and Heath audit. And then in late October, both Bill Griffin and the uh, um, finance director resigned abruptly. We had a uh, new interim town manager, uh, 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 Steve Lombard, who came on. We were able to bring him on pretty quickly. And a new, um, I guess, interim um, finance director, Eric Kincher. And as they, as they were coming on board, they were just discovering all sorts of uh, um, bad practices, misallocations, things put in the wrong pile and so forth. Some of, some of this was highlighted during the Melanson and Heath audit. 
So the second term has been, you know, extremely busy, chaotic, and uh, and uh, sometimes horrifying as we found out how um, dysfunctional some things were. But I think it now, while I think a lot of people still feel that we're in a lot of trouble, we're actually improving dramatically. I think uh, the the books are going to be closed um, by the end of October. We'll be able to get the uh, our financials into the Department of Revenue for our tax allocations early this year rather than last year. It was done at the very last minute, and that is after heroic work by the whole finance department and others. So I, I think that we're actually in pretty good shape right now. And um, you know, the, uh, going forward, I think you know, next year, I think we're going to have a much smoother closing um, and a lot of other issues to be dealt with. In the middle of all this, we decided to go with a uh, new, uh, new uh, accounting software. The one, the software we had was 15 years and was DOS-based, if you can remember DOS. Oh, boy. And um, this, the new one we have is a modern, up-to-date system <coughs> that's actually being uh, uh, transitioned to the cloud as we, as we speak. So this will really give us the opportunity to have a much more efficient and effective uh, accounting system in town which will probably make it uh, easier to avoid some of the problems of the past. Paul, so go, going, going back to the problems of your first term, and we've talked to other people on the show about it. Um, as you said, Bill was in there, Mike was in there, everybody was happy with them, everything seemed to be going great, and then they both left, and from town people just, okay, they're both leaving, and. Parties were thrown and tears were shed and, you know, it was so, you, so hard to see you guys go. And then shortly after that, we discover there's just a disaster. I mean, what, what happened and, and, and how did everybody miss it? That's a great question. Uh, <coughs> I, I ask myself that all the time. I personally feel very responsible for the fact that I wasn't, that I, that I did miss it. Um, we were getting great financial reports, we were living within our budget, um, everything seemed to be working on time, as I, you know, as I look back on it, there weren't, uh, weren't, weren't any particular flags that, um, that, we, were in, that we were in trouble. The, I say the, we, 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 there were some inklings when we were doing the water planning group and having trouble getting information, um, but that seemed to be explainable, but, um, uh, you know, with the with the new t uh, interim town manager and the new finance director, we just discovered all sorts of problems out there. So with it, were I Bill mean, and we had the going. We had a very nice going away party for Bill Griffin because he came in yeah. during another very tumultuous time Correct. in our history. Right after Mark had had left, and I think we were. Uh, I was. I think most people were so grateful for what he had done to calm things down, get. Uh, um, you know, get us back on the even track. So did again. he just mentally check out before he left, or, or was he just not as competent as everyone thought? I mean, he's a nice guy and... Uh, a delightful guy. He did a lot of good things for this town. He, you know, submitted, uh, you know, balanced budgets every year. He... Uh, Which isn't hard, I guess, if the finances <laughs> are, you know, <laughs> they have money's in the wrong place and so forth. Yeah. I mean, do, do you get a sense that this had been going on the entire time Bill was there, or... Did something change uh, uh, during his time? I think it was, my guess is that it was probably steadily deteriorating and hit a tipping point. And again, my guess, I, I can't read the man's mind, is that uh, he realized that, uh, you know, that this thing was going to blow up and he accepted another job pretty quickly. So did you and the other selectmen, uh, you indicated you, you feel some responsibility there. Did, was it just that, you were relying so much on Bill that you guys just kind of took your eye off the ball and assumed he's uh, doing everything right and, and you really should have been looking a little harder. I think so. So what are you doing now based on that history of, of however you felt you, that, whole that whole situation uh, got going? What are you doing differently now as a Board of Selectmen to make sure that that doesn't happen hmm. again? Well, I think we have a much stronger finance department. I think <coughs> one, of the f one of the fundamental problems was that uh, Mike Buckley was severely understaffed and was una unable to get dish additional staff that he was asking for. We now have a fully staffed finance department. We have a finance director. We have an assistant. Actually, we have two assistants. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a great new treasurer collector, Jane Lopardo, and her staff there. Um, so I think the whole financial 
division is much stronger now than it was back then. And uh, we are getting uh, monthly financials. The second selectman's meeting of every month will be reviewing the financials. Um, the, uh, <coughs> and also, the, uh, the town was audited every year. And as part of an audit, the auditor creates what's called a management letter. And uh, it's sort of his, b besides the straight financials and so forth, it's his narrative on how he views the town's financial functions. Um, Bill never shared those with us. Um, in, the in the spring of two th spring or winter of 2011, um, uh, Steve Lombard brought this pile in that he had discovered of these management letters going back seven or eight years, exp you know, consistently talking about the problems in the, fi in the accounting department. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, uh, that Bill never even met with the, with the auditor apparently over those years. Never read these reports and never passed them on to us. Now we're getting those every year. We're going to demand them and we're going to re read them carefully. Um, for the last two years, the uh, town auditor has come and made a presentation to us. We have a, now have a new town auditor, and part of his charge is to come to us if he sees anything that, uh, that he thinks we need to know about. He doesn't have to go through the town manager to see us. Um, we do appoint the, the town auditor, and so he, he does report to us. So we're, I think we have a much stronger relationship uh, with, this new, with the new auditing firm. So given that, do you, do you think that there, uh, there are some people in town that have lost trust, so to speak, because it seems like there's a segment that seems almost as if they're always worrying that uh, they're still not getting proper information or things are happening behind the scenes. There seems to be, you know, always questioning and trying to make it out as if, you know, most, they know what's going on and we don't know what's going on. you think that's a result, result of that? I think it's, a, I think it's a endemic to human nature. I think it goes back to the times in the Ro of the Romans and the Greeks. But I think that, that the problems we've had naturally lead a lot of people to question what's going on. I think back when, during my more Pacific first term, uh, things, uh, you know, I think people had a lot more confidence in government because there weren't any crises. And in fact, things were worse then than they are now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, it, ta I mean, it takes you just time. just didn't know it. Exactly. Right. It takes time to rebuild trust, and uh, I think as, as we continue to show serious financial reports and um, good, good financial controls and not have any more blow-ups, then uh, I think people will start to, you know, some of those people will start to, uh, will see that things are in much better shape. Mm -hmm. But I think mo a lot of people I talk to you know, recognize what's going on and uh, I think that we've done a pretty good job of getting things under control quickly following after the whole financial crisis that uh, emerged uh, was the hiring of um, Mr. Uh, Coughlin as town manager, um, which ended up being pretty much of a disaster, uh, I think, by anyone's um, estimation. Uh, what went wrong with that? I mean, to hire a, a town manager and to fire him within six months, uh, there, there obviously I think you'd agree with me that, that that was pretty much of a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a, 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 a great selection committee that uh, <coughs> went through something like 70 or 80 resumes that they got. They boiled it down to five. We interviewed all five. <coughs> we had two finalists, and we, I think we both felt that either finalist would do a fine job. And um, I think what sort of tipped us to Coughlin was that he was a lawyer, and we have always had problems with our legal expenses and that he would be able to uh, help us keep those under control. <clears throat> you know, t I think at our second meeting in August of uh, 2011, <coughs> the issue came up about the, uh, the canine unit for the, uh, for the police. It had been proposed to us by Chief DeLuca in the spring we had asked the uh, Capital Budget Committee and the Advisory Committee to look into it and get back to us. Uh, capital Budget, because it is taking on a new financial obligation to support the dog and so forth. And um, they asked for some um, additional financial information, which was not forthcoming. So in uh, this meeting in August, I asked that if we can get that information so we can make a decision. 
that uh, was on a Tuesday. On uh, Friday, we got a notice that, uh, that uh, Michael Coughlin had approved the new dog under his powers as town manager. Uh, I, I really was taken aback by that. <clears throat> in one, in, you know, brand new fellow in town, in one step, he dissed the Board of Selectmen, the Advisory Committee, and the Capital Budget Committee, three of the most powerful and, and uh, important committees we have. We don't have a lot of other important committees, but you know these are the people who are looking at the money, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you know th they 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 are supposed to be part of this process. Um, I think uh, shortly after that, I went to Mike and, and told him that I didn't think he handled that right. Uh, I, uh, that it's you don't get off to a good start in your in your new job by basically dissing these three boards. And uh, that I think in, in the future, I would hope that he would be more, you know, forthcoming, and communicate things better with us, and tell us that he's that, that he's planning to do something like this. Well, didn't they? It I, I don't have anything against the canine unit. I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, I, I mean, I'm so glad we have it. It's already uh, provided some very mm -hmm. useful results. Saved, uh, uh, you know, help us to find missing people and so mm. forth. It's a process. But yeah, we 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 had established a process, not a difficult process, but just the process. Right. And he just ignored it. And I, that, to me, was was a red flag right there. Well, because when you say you establish it, because uh, Mike has been on the show in the past, Ted's been on the show, and we're talking about these types of things. Uh, standing back, and obviously we're not, we weren't in the room, but when you, you bring someone like, everyone knows what the town, we have a strong town manager act. The town mm -hmm. manager, there are certain things that he can do or she can do on their own um, without selectman involvement. However, uh, in the past, the, it's, it's one thing, you know, having the power, but uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it would seem like it would make sense to make sure that something like that gets approved by your bosses, the selectmen, because mm -hmm. even though you can do it, they're still your bosses. But why was that conversation held at the very beginning? I mean, that seems like maybe during the interview process, the question would be asked, would you use your powers um, on your own or would you come to the selectmen and or if not them, then perhaps, you know, at the time he's hired that this is how we expect this. Did you do that and Mike just wasn't listening or didn't you do that? Well, it, it, it came out in some of the questions we were asking. I don't think we asked it as directly as, as you stated, but we, we talked to him about his relationship with the board and how he would work with us and so forth. And, we're all going to be very collaborative and working together for a better Cohasset. But looking back, maybe you should have been a little more direct. I think we should have pushed, pushed the, that issue and some other issues more thoroughly. Well, that sounds like another learning experience where maybe you just assumed he would be, uh, you know, following in the same foot back, uh, footprints or expectations that you had for the former town manager, and it just wasn't articulated. You know, we had, <coughs> I mean, we did, except for the problems with the books. We had a good working relationship with Bill Griffin. We had a great work relationship with Steve Lombard. Um, Michael Coughlin is a uh, you know experienced town manager. He hadn't been a town manager for a long time, but he had I think uh, ten years of experience. And one would think that he would know. I guess foolishly, we accept, we we thought that he would know how to handle the politics of running a town. It's also you mentioned he had experience, but. What was it? Two out of the three former experiences he had did not end well. He was fired from two jobs, yes. Yeah, so I mean, did that set off any red lights before you hired him? Well, <clears throat> we had a consultant that we had hired, a very distinguished fellow who has been was a uh, town manager for many years and has been doing this sort of work for a long time. And part of his job was to do the vetting. And uh, it, apparently he didn't do the vetting that he told us he was going to do. But you knew at the time you hired him about how his previous positions had ended? No, we, um, I didn't know that at the time. You didn't? Oh, no. Okay. We, we, you know, we, um, I, I saw some of the commentary from the other towns you can get from searching on the web, but, you know, there's always sour grapes in a lot of situations, and I thought that's what it was. Were there any visits? I know when, back in the day, when we hired uh, superintendents, we would go out to the town and we had day-long visits mm -hmm. at the schools mm -hmm. talking to principals and teachers. And what, Did any of that or was it all left to this, this fellow that was supposed to do the vetting? 
Uh, we did not visit the towns, no. Okay. Um, I know Ted tried to call people in Westport, and everybody told him everything was just great there. Mm -hmm. So he, I think he made five or six calls and got uh, five or six positive answers. Um, so, you know, like <coughs> I, you know, th <coughs> that, and he presented he presented himself very well, mm -hmm. and uh, seemed to have you know a good amount of experience. So we went with him. And after the canine episode, it was all downhill from there. It just one incident after another. Um, uh, a lot of uh, very poor communications with other town boards. He didn't want the other town boards, like <coughs> the enterprise funds, which have to have a business to manage, to get their financial information. He uh, forced out the uh, um, town accountant by the name of John Stanbrook, who was there for about six months. But three months into Coughlin's reign, he forced him out because he wanted to provide information to the enterprise funds that they, they needed. And Coughlin didn't like that. He didn't. He wanted to control everything himself. He had to go. Mm -hmm. Do you, the process, looking back on the process, um, any regrets about how that all went, or did you feel it, uh, it, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but it was something just needed to be done, and we did it the right way? I think we did it the right way. We had uh, great legal advice from town council. Uh, we followed their advice. Um, the uh, and you know it's done. We move on. I mean, I think the important thing when you have a situation like that is to admit that you've got a problem and act on it rather than papering it over. Mm -hmm. And any, you know, anything further would have simply been trying to ignore the problem. So, did you do anything differently or c go into the process with new eyes when you chose the new acting town manager? Well, that was <coughs> that was another interesting story. We, uh, we immediately need somebody to fill those shoes when, uh, um, after uh, Coughlin was terminated. And uh, Michael Milanowski came on for two weeks as a volunteer to be a town manager. And after two weeks, we put him on to a uh, contract. And early on, it was just so impressive, the great job he was doing. He, you know, he was new to town government in terms of Cohasset. Well, he'd been in town government before, um, but he, he just seemed to be on top of all of our issues, on top of the finances, top of a lot of details, um, you know, um, <coughs> you know, a, a lot of, as, as various problems that uh, Coughlin left behind him surfaced, he was able to deal with them in an energetic and expeditious manner. It was just an inc incredible tour de force that we saw in uh, in those uh, early months there, so we gave him a contract to uh, expire in uh, um, June of two thousand June thirty two thousand thirteen to get him through the budget cycle. He, by that time, he was already well into the budget cycle for the um, for the for the thirteen budget. And as time went on, I mean, it just became more and more clear to me, and I think to most of the other board members that this, this is really a great talent, a great find that we had. Now he was, so originally came on two weeks. Well, originally he, he did it for no pay, right? Did That's I remember right. that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he was paid a, a small stipend and then got the contract to June 13. Yes. And then... Yeah, we couldn't put him on, or give him a real contract until actually we finished the process with Coughlin. Okay. So by that time we had uh, about a month of seeing what Michael Milanowski was doing. Right, and then that's when you gave him the contract through the through June or July of 2013. Mm -hmm. And then now recently uh, that contract has been extended or he has a new contract. Ex explain what the status is on that. Well, part of his contract was he had to have a six month review. <coughs> we were required to do that under the contract. Um, <coughs> we did the review and as I say, uh, most of us shared my opinion of the great work that he was doing, and it, it seemed to me that we would like to extend him for another two years, and uh, that to bring him through uh, June of 2015. He has a lengthy agenda of items that he wants to accomplish in, uh, in, ver in various areas of the town, and uh, I think this would give him the time to accomplish that. But the the concept of acting town manager, and he's going to be acting for 
what, three years. Um, so it's a little unusual. Mo most of the time when people think about acting, they think of Lombard or someone who comes in just as a stopgap uh, while you can do the complete search. And I know issues have been uh, raised uh, about that. Um, explain for people, because it gets a little complicated, why you can't just hire him as town manager. If you like Mike so much, why you just can't make him town manager? <clears throat> well, there's uh, something called the Town Manager Act. And this is a, uh, essentially the constitution for the town of Cohasset. It was uh, passed by town meeting as a, uh, <clears throat> as a home rule petition, we went to the uh, state house, the, uh, the great and general court passed on it and so forth. And that is the law that governs how we operate in the town of Cohasset. Um, we also have bylaws and rules and regulations, but the overarching law like the constitution of the United States is our town manager act. One of the provisions in there is that uh, nobody who has had elected or appointed office in the town um, can be appointed as town manager until they've been out of office for a year. Until out of the elected or appointed office, office for one year. Yeah. Okay. So he had been, um, he had two volunteer positions in the town. He had been uh, a member, a, uh, alternate member of the Conservation Commission and was also uh, um, the chair of the selection committee, which had by that time had become the governance committee. Right. So, so you th to wait those, a year. Pre those prevailed, pre prevented him from being appointed um, um, full town manager. But there's no restriction in the Town Manager Act on how long somebody can be the acting town manager. So, why isn't, if it's a one year period and his other contract? end in July of 2013. That, that would have been a full year, right? No, he has to be out of town government for a year. Out, out of town of government entirely. Yes. So he can't, so the acting um, town manager uh, gig counts toward that. Yes. Oh, okay. This All is, right. This is the Town Manager Act. It's, it's up on the website. Anybody can download it and uh, state it all they want. But um, um, let's see. Right here. Yeah, because yes. I think that's that th th confuses th people does. a little. That mm -hmm. it seems like you're out a year, but you've got to. So he can never, right? No, ever yeah, no be person town holding elective or appointed of office in the town shall, within one year of holding such office, be eligible to be appointed to the position of town manager. All right. So unless he were to take a one, a one year sabbatical, uh, he could yes. never be town manager. But I think a lot of people, uh, in, and understand, you've, you've stated clearly that how impressed you are with, with Mike's work, um, uh, felt that you still should have gone through the process of doing some kind of a search. Um, but the decision was made not to do that. Why? Well, in a lot of companies, if, uh, if there's a great person who's moving up through the ranks and, um, there's, and they feel that he's ready or he or she is ready, for the next position. They don't do a search. I think searches are done in a relatively small portion of major personnel moves. Um, in this case, uh, we had we had somebody we felt was a great talent and um, doing a great job for us. And I think we'd also come through the, the, the uh, debacle with Coughlin, who was well searched. Um, How'd that turn out? There'd been a <laughs> fine search for Bill Griffin who certainly had all the experience in the world. I think he'd been 30 years as a town manager in various towns in, around here. And neither of those worked out particularly well. So we had, uh, you know, we, we, yeah, we had somebody on site who was doing a fine job, communicating well, working with the various town boards, working well with us. Why take a chance on somebody else? I and mean, every time you go outside, you're taking a risk. Right. And you know, the last two shots didn't work so well. Um, I guess you could say the Hatted situation didn't work so well either. Um, so stick with stick with what we have. Take the known person. And, and uh, un under this rule, by the way, you know, say we had an assistant town manager, that person also could not become town manager under this act. So you know, are you trying to amend that uh, now, or well, I that's that's. Uh, <coughs> 
you want to get into the governance committee now? It's sort of a well, change. That's what I was going to. No, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. I, I just wanted to ask. I just wanted to point out that people should probably know that a search for a, a candidate such as town manager is not a cheap process. Mm -hmm. So th I, I was going to ask you if that was another consideration too. That you had this good uh, candidate that you were happy with. Why not save the, the amount of money it takes to do a search? Right. Okay. Well, so so fill us in then. So he's on board, and then the governance committee begins to do its work. And uh, for those of us who've been on uh, uh, boards, we get a, a survey, and they're and they're asking different questions. Tell us what their role is and why they came into being at this particular time. Um, I think partly it was due to the uh, um, <coughs> blowback from our moves with the Conservation Commission in the uh, summer of in you know, the summer of eleven. You know, we <coughs> nobody's really seriously looked at the whole Town Manager Act since it was instituted in 1997, so that's 15 years. Every, I think every piece of legislation like this ought to be reviewed from time to time. Um, but, uh, so that was part of it. Also, there are a number of um, conflicts between the Town Manager Act and the bylaws. Uh, the Town Manager Act is superior, but maybe we need to, you know, um, review the bylaws to make them consistent with the Town Manager Act. None of that, that was not done when the Town Manager Act was uh, uh, promulgated back in, well, it was actually done in the town in 96 and passed by the legislature in 97. So this, they're supposed to take a soup to nuts look at the, the whole structure of town government. Uh, we have lots and lots of committees in town. We have lots and lots of terrific volunteers who work on those committees. <coughs> and we owe them all a debt of gratitude and I think we need to make sure that everything is just organized well, that there's not things falling between the cracks, that we don't have committees dueling over the same issues and so forth, duplication. Um, and maybe there's some other issues that should be, that should be covered. So, so they've done the, uh, the initial surveys, and, and where are they in the process? Have, have they come back to, to you with uh, recommendations? I know we want to have the chair on, uh, on our time to talk about it, but heard some discussion about some boards might be moving from elected positions to appointed positions and so mm -hmm. forth. Where are they? Are they close to uh, coming forward with their their findings and, and making recommendations? They, they have a very <coughs> aggressive schedule for getting this done. Um, I think most, most of what they're working on right now is the review of the Town Manager Act. There are a number of issues in there that they've identified that uh, I think uh, they're going to recommend for change. Some cases, some cases, just making the wording more clear. In other cases, the the, uh, the, the form and structure needs to be changed. Um, the I think the we I, I'm the liaison to the committee, so I've been attending their meetings recently, but I'm not a member. But I think they're planning to come with uh, come together with some proposals at town meeting on December 10th. So is that language? And these will be. These will be essentially amendments to the Town Manager Act. The language you just cited that keeps the board from appointing Mike as just the town manager, is that one of the things that you're looking at to um, yes. jettison? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <coughs> it's, it's my proposal, which I, I think that they're going to go with, is that uh, board of, a member of the Board of Selectmen cannot be appointed town manager for at least a year after the person's term expires. <coughs> You know, it'd be, I, I think I'd be concerned if a member of the board could get together with buddies and say, I'm going to quit next week. Would you make me town manager? Here's the deal. Yeah. 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 You get rid of, I'll get leave, rid of Joe but, here yeah. and hire me next right. week, right. and suddenly I, uh, I, uh, I'm in charge. So I think it should be at least a year. It gets through at least one election cycle, possibly two. And uh, yeah, there can be substantial turnover of the board of selectmen in that period of time. And so it's mm -hmm. not my buddies appointing me, it's, you know, it's you know, independent people. But otherwise, uh, having served for the town in, in another elective or point of capacity would not be a, a bar. That's correct. That, that That's the point of the proposal that they're currently working on. And uh, just is it because you just laid out why a selectman shouldn't be and that maybe the original view was that that's the same reason anyone else shouldn't be, but it's really not as applicable to someone on the Conservation Commission or um, on the well, zoning they, board. Yeah, we're the ones who appoint the town manager. He right. works for us. <coughs> he, he's essentially our agent. 
the CONCOM is, is you know, in a sense, off to the side. They're not part of this equation. Mm -hmm. If we saw somebody on the Conservation Commission who uh, would make a wonderful town manager and went through whatever process there was and so forth, we should be able to hire them. We should be able to, if we had a, uh, uh, I think, well, our town council has the example of a town that he, another town that he works with, where the, uh, um, they, had an, they had an assistant town manager for 10 years, everybody loves this person, thinks they're great, the town manager retired, move them on up. Well, so it, yeah. that, that's, you know, that, that we can't do that. Well, that's right, but what you've, you've found, uh, a workaround, basically, because I, there's no difference, I assume, between acting town manager and town manager. Uh, he's not getting paid less because he's only acting. He's still getting the same benefits and so forth. He still has the same power, I assume. Yes. Um, so really what you've done is you've come across this provision, which given your um, how pleased you are with Mike, you've just kind of done a workaround and called him acting, and that's okay, uh, even though he's really the town manager for all intents and purposes. He is. Uh, he, he is he's acting like the town manager, yes. Okay. Just like Steve Lombard did. And so mm -hmm. if this changes, uh, would you then uh, change his, him to a, a full town manager, or, or why bother? I would recommend that to the board, yes. But why, why would that even matter? I mean, isn't the, again, isn't acting just a word? It doesn't, doesn't oh, mean it's, anything. It's, it's a little cleaner. Yeah. Okay. Again, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but that would be my, 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 that would be my plan. Now we have other issues with um, uh, senior town employees, uh, and I'm thinking about uh, Chief DeLuca. Uh, there were there was two two battles or two conflicts that seemed to be going on. There was the um, DeLuca versus the acting town manager piece and then just the, the Board of Selectmen or the town versus DeLuca. The town manager piece with DeLuca, that's, that's been resolved as I understand right. it. Mm -hmm. and, and just quickly for the viewers, the resolution of that was what? <coughs> well, at, at the same time that the union, the police union was bringing some very serious allegations against uh, um, the chief, uh, he brought some allegations against Mike, no, Michael Malinowski that uh, he had conspired with the head of the police union to cover up some incident. Was that, that, that the incident about the official car at the camp? About the, the voting? Yeah. yeah okay. on, on election day, one of the police officers had brought the Humvee down to Highland Avenue and put some posters up there, don't let the station go dark and so forth. And uh, Ted Carr, who was standing outside with all the other candidates, saw it and called up the chief, and the chief called up the officer and the truck disappeared in, in short order. I think it was there for 15 or 20 minutes or something. Um, the, uh, on, that was Saturday, that was Monday, uh, uh, sorry, Saturday. On Monday, the uh, um, town manager, Michael, and the uh, head of the police union had a conversation about a number of subjects, including some, I, I believe, some discussion about, you know, about the, uh, about the Humvee incident. They, they, didn't, there was, they didn't discuss quid pro quos or anything like that, but that was, uh, it, it came in through passing, I think, in their discussion. Um, Chief DeLuca felt that there had been a quid pro quo and that this, this was uh, inappropriate interference with, the, with his chain of command and he shouldn't be talking, uh, Michael Malinowski should not be talking to the union. Well, under state law, the town manager has an absolute right to talk to any union president um, on it for about any employees underneath his control. The chief of police, the chief of the fire, the chief of uh, you know, the library, um, all these uh, folks have, have no right to interfere with that process. So, uh, <coughs> you know, DeLuca's attempt to interfere in that was, in, was uh, inappropriate. Um, both, uh, he had third hand that there'd been some quid pro quos. Both um, uh, Melanowski and Patrick Reardon, who was then the, at the time the head of the union, denied that there was any discussion of quid pro quos. And uh, so in the absence of any first hand information, 
um, indicting uh, Malinowski, there was there was no case. And that was that on that, that was case. That. So we had that. We that was a decision by the board of selectmen because of an allegation against our employee, our direct report. Okay. Now, um, as far as Chief DeLuca, he was. There were allegations um, about uh, about him that concerned the town manager and the board of selectmen, and he was suspended uh, with pay. With pay. And now that's been feels like it's been six months or so. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. It was but uh, it, May twenty fifth. Okay. The, the so. Friday before Memorial Day. Oh, you remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The little things that you remember. <laughs> right. So, um, what is the status of that procedure? What is going on um, with that? I mean, we, it seems to have disappeared from the news recently, and every once in a while people say, well, gee, you know, what ever happened to DeLuca? What's the status? I can't give you a status report. It's a personnel matter that's under review and under and consideration, we are moving forward, um, but I can't, I can't, uh, I can't discuss it. So who, who's, who's reviewing it? Is it the board of selectmen that that do the review? Then, uh, I just under, well, under the town manager act, the the police chief reports to the, the uh, town manager. Okay. So we're really uh, separated from it. If he appeals, if there is a hearing, and if the hear and you know a lot of ifs here, if he appeals the hearing. And if the uh, <coughs> hearing, uh, what's, what's it? first of all, I'm sorry, first he has to have the hearing. If that goes negative, then he has the a right to appeal to the Board of Selectmen. So we have to really keep hands off because we have almost a, a quasi-judicial role mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this. So it's really up to uh, Michael Milanowski to, uh, to come to a, a, a conclusion of, and he's working closely with the uh, town council and um, the Lucas Council and so forth. And so, his, so there's an ongoing investigation that Mike is holding on this topic, um, and, and do I remember? So, t town council are they in doing the investigation? It was an outside investigator hired um, on this issue. I'd rather not get into this okay. anymore. But um, there will be a hearing at some point. There may be. I can't. I can't be sure of that. Oh, okay. Well, so under the town manager act, the hearing is not required. I mean, that's just a legal matter. You can. I, I, you don't I, know? I don't, I, I don't want to get into it. Okay. It's, uh, I, right. I really don't. I'm sorry. But meanwhile, <laughs> he's still suspended without pay. With pay. No, with pay. With pay. And we do have somebody that's uh, in an acting position Bill as, Quigley, right? as yeah, the, the acting police yeah, chief. Yeah, this past winter, we appointed uh, Bill Quigley as deputy police chief. He's acting, he's, he's still a deputy police chief. And we have a, uh, a temporary situation where Bob Sylvia, the fire chief, is now the head of public safety. Mm -hmm. And both the deputy fire chief and the deputy police chief are reporting to him. Yeah, so that's that's kind of an unusual um, so setup. So Bobby is really the head of both police and fire, right? Um, and the acting chief reports to the actual fire chief. Um, why did you decide to, or, or did town manager decide to do? Oh, it's it a town that manager way? decision. Do you, do you know why um, why did it didn't make Bill Quigley? Acting police chief and Bobby stays on as fire, and the two are separate. Again, Bob Sylvia is one of the real gems in town. Oh, no doubt, he's one of the you know one of the finest public servants we have Absolutely. among many. Yes, um, he uh, he wants to bring his deputy police chief along and give him more responsibility, John Dockery. So this is an opportunity. De deputy fire. Deputy fire. Yeah, and so this is a chance for him to do that as well as to mentor Bill Quigley, and. Uh, Give him some hands-on supervision, and uh, which I understand is working out very well. That's what I was going to ask you. You're, you're, uh, Bill, you're Bill's, satisfied. Bill's a quick learner. Yeah, and he's t um, and from uh, from all I gather, everything's calmed down in the police department. Now, um, the there was one incident with the police that got a lot of um, notoriety, and that's the Roy fireworks, the Roy wedding fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of opinions uh, were shared about how that was handled. Um, looking at it is, uh, yourself, uh, were you satisfied that it was handled the right way or it could have been a little different? Or what's your view? Right. Well, it was uh, flat out illegal to have all those fireworks there. And uh, so that, that had to be dealt with. Um, we, do, we, we do police uh, Bassings Beach 
although it's technically in Situate, but that's part of the agreement we have with the town of Situate. And when the police saw them, they confiscated them, and that's, that's what the law calls for. There, there are substantial fines also that were possible, but we, we handled that as just a simple confiscation. So no fines no, were levied? No, I don't, I don't think it was any effort, any intent to, to distribute or anything like that. They were just going to It was off. just going to be a, a straight party for, and for, I think, $100, you can get a permit. So I was mean, there ever any explanation as to why? Was it somebody, did someone on the Roy's side just drop the ball and not go in and get the permit? Or do, do you know? Um, I really don't know what, Because it does seem a little. I mean, yeah, they, they, they've had fireworks they there before. They can afford $100 mm -hmm. for the But they also had fireworks there before. I remember Many sitting, times. I remember sitting mm -hmm. out on Government Island a number of years ago yeah. on for the 4th of July and a beautiful fireworks yeah. display. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they publicized it ahead of time and it was great. They were having a party there and as part of the party was the fireworks. Right, right. Yeah. Well, why he didn't get the permit and make it appropriate was one small detail. Who knows? Mm -hmm. you know, who mm -hmm. knows? Maybe it was an oversight or what? I don't know. I've heard rumor because this was a wedding, I think. For right, his, son. his son's wedding. I heard rumors of police with bullhorns out uh, in the middle of their wedding reception and so forth. I don't know whether that's true. Have you heard anything? I haven't that? heard anything about okay, that. Okay, so that's probably just the only thing <laughs> another Cohasset rumor. That was that, a party uh, the only thing I know about is yeah, that's the only thing I've, <laughs> I've heard about is a party. Some other party. Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. So, so Paul, with all this behind us, so to speak, uh, in us moving forward, what do you see now? Some of the, the issues before Cohasset that maybe uh, we don't know about or haven't been brought forward yet. What's what's on the upcoming agenda for folks to see? Well, I think a, a big issue that uh, is going to affect the town for many years is uh, handling the re uh, retiree health care benefits. Um, <laughs> Under state law, we're required to give health care benefits to our, to our retirees. The terms of that are largely dictated by state law, but we're responsible for funding it. What we've been doing over the years is just funding our current obligation and, uh, you know, for both the current and the and both, both current employees and current retirees. But we haven't been putting anything aside for the future. Now, every year that somebody works for us, they build up a, uh, a, uh, an obligation on our part to take care of them in later years. Right now, the, the value of that obligation, that future obligation for our current retirees and our current employees on a uh, discounted basis is $32 million. For just employees in Cohasset? Yes, just for Cohasset. Employees and, and our retirees that we're responsible for in the state system. To, uh, to start to adequately fund that uh, would, co would cost us an additional $1.4 million. Uh, on a 30-year amortization, it would cost us $1.4 million to fund that. That seems like a lot. It's a, it's a lot of money. We have a, you know, outside of the enterprise funds, our budget is about $35 million. It's very tight. We don't have a lot of uh, wiggle room in there. Um, now, there are some things that are going on. There's a state commission that is looking into this issue. <coughs> It's a big issue for this. The state has $16 billion worth of uh, liability that's unfunded, and the municipalities in the state have another $30 billion, B, wow. billion dollars of uh, unfunded liabilities. Um, we see a number of municipalities in California have gone bankrupt. Central Falls in Rhode Island went bankrupt. If this continues on, it's going to you know, it's going to bankrupt a lot of towns in, co in uh, Massachusetts. I mean, a lot of poor towns that just don't have the, can't handle this. Let me ask a related question to that, um, and this may be another Cohasset rumor. Do we give health insurance um, to appointed or elected officials, I mean, volunteers, if they are for a certain amount of years? Nope. Okay. Uh, n nothing like that that you're aware of? There was one thing like that for the assessors because the members of the Board of Assessors um, are paid, and, um, but uh, that was eliminated during the first year of my first term. Okay. Uh, back in 2007, 2008. So school committee people, boards of uh, selectmen members, 
they don't get any health insurance or any benefits at all, other than you get $1,000. Did you still get $1,000 <laughs> a year? $2,000. Oh, no, no, Chairman gets $1,500. Oh, oh wow. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the others only get $1,000. Oh, there you go. There you so go. when you go from chairman back to a regular, it's a real cut in income. <laughs> One of the things that um, also has come up recently is, and I, I can't remember what you call it, but uh, the code of conduct or whatever that oh, the mm -hmm. Board civility. of Selectmen, civility, um, put together. And there was a recently, I think, before the Board of Selectmen, some, some discussion on that. Um, I know when I first saw that you, the Board was putting that in, I, I mean, I, I understand there's been a lot of uncivil discussion. I, I think everyone can agree, and then you, the disagreement is whose fault it is and who, who mm -hmm. hit Johnny first. But um, why bother with the code of civility? First of all, you'd like to think everyone's adults and you wouldn't need it, but apparently, you know, that's not always the case. Uh, if you really can't do anything about it, there's, you can't enforce it, you can't tell townspeople nor other mm -hmm. uh, elected officials or appointed officials, well, why even bother? Well, first let me state that probably 99.5% of all communications amongst town officials is done highly professionally, very civilly, a lot of respect for people back and forth and so forth. There's not a lot of this, but there, there were a couple of um, major incidents, and we decided that it just makes sense to state that this is our position. Like you say, it's not enforceable. I mean, the First Amendment trumps every anything in this order, so I mean, I'm not going to certainly uh, do anything like that. But I think I, we thought it was worthwhile just to state that we think this is the this is the right way to do things. But did uh, and, and I didn't see the um, here. It was within the last month when uh, you, it came up as a topic at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. I mean. Did you feel that anything was accomplished by that? Uh, or, I mean, well, we, we had a discussion about it. I think we raised people's awareness of it again. Um, you know, like I say, it's not something we can do a lot about. But, I, but, I, but it's not also, it's just not that big a problem. It, right. it's, you know, it well, it, it, it's a small amount and it's a small group of people, but that small group of people um, can get pretty vicious. I mean, some of the things uh, that mm -hmm. I've seen, uh, and and uh, I don't. I, and there's no way to control it. You just hope that people will, in some some ways, just get a life and you know, <laughs> move on uh, with with some of this stuff. I mean, people care, and that's a good thing, I guess. And the bad thing is, people do really care. Um, but sometimes, uh, whether you're in town government or out of town government, it can it can go overboard a little, right? I think uh, most of us care about the jobs we're doing. Most of us, you know, whether uh, elected, appointed, or employees, um, I think uh, most of us are passionate about trying to do the right thing for the town of Cohasset. I mean, just, you don't have to do any of these things. You know, nobody has to. Ser nobody has to serve on these boards. People choose to do that because they care. Mm -hmm. And I think um, most people are able to have the to have the necessary conversations about things they're passionate about without getting into. Uh, um, name calling and so forth, right. um, but I think every once in a while we just have to be reminded. Just like at, at the beginning of every town meeting, the moderator reads mm -hmm. the rules of conduct for the town meeting, right. and uh, just to remind people that that's how we're going to conduct business. Another thing that um, I've noticed recently, and, and, I, and, and I understand it's hard from the town's point of view, we have limited resources and so forth, but I'm starting to get the feeling that uh, anytime there's a controversy which may lead to the courts that the town is going is backing down because of not wanting to pay legal fees um, I think this is there's the library situation has come up uh, we have um, uh, some other planning board uh, zoning issues that it seems uh, it seems like we're taking the position that unless we can definitely win, and maybe even if we can win, we don't want to spend the legal fees. Do, do you see that, or, or is that a, how much, a, how appropriate is it to be considering legal fees when deciding whether to defend boards and so hmm. forth? Well, last year we spent over four hundred forty thousand dollars on legal fees. Was that By, an unusual year, or no? You know, I think our budget is about two hundred, two hundred twenty. What's the retainer amount now? There's a retainer agreement. Yes. And how much, how, what is that? I think that's 54000 Okay. So that only covers specific. And that covers sort of the routine. General stuff. General yeah. stuff. And then When you get into uh, land issues, labor issues, um, 
then then it starts to go up. Um, during the first six months of last fiscal year, excuse me, Mike Coughlin went through the whole budget. We had to get a uh, supplemental budget to fund our legal expenses for the second half of the year. Yeah. I think that uh, what uh, Michael Malinowski is trying to do is is damp that down, try to get it under control, making sure if we are going to go to court, we really do have a good case. Now, most of our zoning cases, most of our planning board cases, we win. But we still still cost us a lot of money. So one thing that he wants to do is, uh, well, let's take, for example, the, the windmill on Turkey Hill right now. It's been approved by the planning board. Um, the abutters, who happen to live in Hingham, are, uh, are appealing to the court. We're not the beneficiary of this. The trustees of reservation, which owns the parcel, is going to benefit from this, is the beneficiary. But nevertheless, we're stuck with the legal fees defending the uh, planning board in this case. But can't you go in that, using that example and just say, you guys take the lead on this. We'll have an attorney there and so mm -hmm. forth. But you guys take the lead since that you're really the beneficiaries. Well, that's, that's something that uh, Michael's trying to change so that, uh, you know, what, what the trustees pay for the legal fees, not, mm -hmm. not the town of Cohasset. Mm -hmm. And smart. this happens in, you know, that's the most dramatic case, but it happens frequently in other cases as well. Um, you know, we will give whatever permits are necessary and so forth that you have to defend. Uh, in, in, in the matter of not going to court when you have a strong case, I'm not, uh, I'm not aware of any concrete example. Do you, do you have an example of that? Or? No, not so much a strong case, but just the, uh, how much of a consideration should legal fees, uh, le legal, the legal bills be when you decide whether or not to take a case going forward? I'm inclined to say you're the lawyer. You tell me. But <laughs> I'm, I'm all in favor. Don't I'm all in favor of paying know. lawyers. So I, I think uh, lawyers got to live too. But you, anyway, and I, I have no problem paying good lawyers for good work. There's no yes. doubt about that. All right. You know what, Paul? Unfortunately, um, we're getting the signal that we're we're running out of time. So uh, we'll, hopefully, you'll come back and we can pick up on that and some other topics in the future. Thanks so much for coming in. Well, thank you very much for having me in. This has been very interesting. You've been well worth your 1500 bucks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so um, that was, uh, the, I think, very good to have Paul in. Mm -hmm. Went through a lot of the history. Right. And um, because people read a little something in the Mariner, hear something on the street, it's sometimes hard to, uh, to understand the full story, from, was certainly from Paul's perspective of how some of these things happen. Certainly, and I think it's always easier when you're on the outside to second guess or have an opinion without knowing really all the different things that come into place as far as, like you talked about, you know, legal, you talked about legal fees and personnel and town manager acts and budgets. It's a very complex uh, process of governing the town of Cohasset. It's not as easy as some people think. Well, I think uh, Paul is serving, you know, we didn't ask him whether he was going to run again. Well, he probably wasn't going to tell us that anyway. We're going to have to do part no, we, two. Yeah, we're going to have to go two hours. Or something yeah, like that. Yeah. We just got so much stuff. Um, but uh, to understand, uh, when you're chairman of the board of selectmen, you at least get an insight into the thought process and how he approaches um, the job is important. You can agree or disagree, mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. And you can dispute some of the things that are said, but at least you understand um, uh, the, the process. And uh, I, I hopefully that, that is helpful to folks. And hopefully it's helpful for folks to, to tune in and watch because we hope to bring that information to viewers so that they can get up to speed on what's going on. And then, of course, we always encourage them to uh, tune into Selectman's meetings. They're available now on uh, on demand and here on the channel and always go to town, me to town meeting to get involved to, to vote for what's coming before the electric. What's the latest on our website? Uh, well, we can put it up. It is uh, still growing, but you can click on and watch any of the episodes from our show and the Selectman and School Committee on demand on okay. your own schedule. And how do you do that? Well, we'll have, like I said, we're going to put up the website. Uh, we'll have Don put well, it what's up. What's the website? How do you get, what is the website? One, four, three. Three TV. Yep. Okay. We'll Dot Board? Well, huh? I'm we sure it has www backslash colon blah blah blah. All right, blah, well, Don blah, will blah. put that up on the screen, <laughs> right? He'll do that right now to show. And, and that's kind of a neat new thing, which mm -hmm. I think people should be aware of uh, because people hear about a show, they want right. to see it, at least we hope so. Um, and then they, they're struggling because the times don't quite work out. Right. Now, 
um, you get the ability to watch on demand, basically. Whenever or wherever. Yeah, so you can you can watch us 24-7. Yeah, yeah, if you're so inclined. Uh, why not? We wish. Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right, well, so we're looking forward to the acting town manager coming in mm -hmm. and to our presidential debate over the next month. And then hopefully to the chairman of the governance committee to bring us up to speed on their work and their results. Excellent. Well, for now, I'm Mark DiGiacomo. For Pat Martin and our entire crew behind the cameras and in the studio, good night.